Welcome everybody to our first ever remote and virtual commemoration service that has been held by this community for 119 years, every year since 1901. And this, the 120th commemoration day, will surely go down in the history books forever as one, if not the most, extraordinary. The service is, of course, designed as a marker in the school year to help the school come together, current governors, parents, pupils, staff and alumni, to remember the history of the college and, in particular, those parishioners of St Dunstan's in the East, whose foresight it was that led to the foundation of St Dunstan's College in Catford, in 1888, and building on that church's historical role in providing an education within its parish as far back as the 15th century. And we don't just recognise the parishioners, but the many friends, livery companies and other benefactors whose generosity it was that led to the founding of our very great school. And just because this year is different does not mean to say that the commemoration day service as we know it has not had its fair share of change and challenge over the years. And I thought I might begin today's remote service by reflecting on something of the history of Commemoration Day. 1901 was the first College Commemoration Day. It was instigated by the then Vicar of St Dunstan's in the East, Reverend Redpath, who was also a College Governor. And it took place on a Sunday, 19th of May, 1901, St Dunstan's Day, in the Church of St Dunstan's in the East, attended by 200 boys, parents, teachers and governors. Apparently the vicar began the service by saying, what mean ye by this service? And from that moment on, it has been celebrated annually ever since, now taking place on the Friday immediately before the May Spring Bank holiday, for convenience sake, and a week or so after the actual Saints' Day. From 1925, a procession began. And you did hear me correctly, a procession. In fact, the whole school, led by the CCF Corps, marched to St Dunstan's in the east from the train station at Cannon Street. They marched through the city of London and were accompanied by piping and drumming and people lined the streets to watch what, be, what would have been an extraordinary spectacle. Commemoration Day itself has not been without interruption. In fact, in 1926, it was interrupted entirely by the general strike, which meant that the rail service was cancelled and therefore prevented travel up to St Dunstan's in the East. And on, in, on that occasion, Commemoration Day was held at St Dunstan's College itself. For the Second World War, of course, Commemoration Day was held elsewhere. And in that case, it was held in St Mary's Parish Church in Reigate. Now, I can't quite work out what happened during the Commemoration Day of 1945 which must presumably have happened just after VE Day and before the school's relocation back to London from Wales. So I'm hoping that out there there is a Dunstonian who knows what happened for Commemoration Day 1945 and, and hopefully they'll be good enough to, to tell me. The first post-war Commemoration Day was particularly poignant, of course, because in 1946 the school returned to what was now the ruins of St Dunstan's in the east. By that stage, of course, being derelict after its heavy bombing, a state it still finds itself in today. And one can perhaps imagine the school crowded around that famous Wren Tower, reflecting on the utter destruction of their spiritual home and birthplace. In 1947, the college commemorated the school's foundation in St Paul's Cathedral, but it was in 1948 that it moved to Southwark Cathedral, where it has remained ever since. The tradition of marching from the railway station to the location of the service continued after the war, but now it continued across London Bridge from Cannon Street down to Southwark Cathedral. The Corps had instructions as they went across London Bridge to present their eyes for the left for the benefit of the chairman of governors who stood prominently on the edge of a pavement. But there was a bit of a problem, which is that very few of the boys actually knew who the chairman of governors was. So to overcome this issue, Mrs Brown, the head secretary and a well-known figure in the school, was placed in a very conspicuous hat close to the chairman. So unknown to the chairman, it was always Mrs Brown who received the salute from the cadets. Growing volumes of traffic finally finished the marching aspect of Commemoration Day. 
the core created, as you can imagine, apparently infuriating many lawyers. They marched across London Bridge, and in the end, it was the installation of new traffic lights that made this aspect of it impossible to continue. 119 unbroken commemoration days. Commemoration Day 120 will, of course, go down in the history books as being the first ever remote one, a remote commem, a commem where no children, staff, parents or alumni can physically gather together, but one nonetheless where we will do everything within our gift to mark and remember the history and spirit of St Dunstan's, to remember the benevolence of our founders, their vision for a college that should be ahead of its current time. And we give thanks and hope that their bright vision will continue to be fulfilled in the good times and in those of challenge. And my thanks go to everyone who has pulled this video together at very short notice and amongst a multitude of other priorities. And I hope very much that for everybody, it can be a moment of calm and reflection amidst a period of particular challenge. Thank you. We have come here today to give thanks to God for all our founders and benefactors, to pray for the school and by the witness of our lives to share our rich inheritance with others. We are the stewards of many gifts and so we remember before God the generosity of those who have gone before us and among them we pray for the repose of the souls of Sir William Barrett, Sir William Senock, Sir Bartholomew James, Matthew Ernest, Sir William Herriot, Alderman Henry Herdson, Thomas Cattell, Thomas Harry, Sir Richard Goldstone, Sir Richard Champion, Margaret Dean, William Haynes, George Hanger, Sir Thomas Hunt, Bernard Hyde, Mirabel Bennett, Lady Anne Conway, Anne Hyde, William Bateman, Gilbert Keat, Sir John Moore, Sir William Russell, Sir Thomas Chitty, and Edmund Turville. We remember them with gratitude and give thanks for their example. We continue to be grateful to all those who, like them, have given their time, their way of living and their gifts to enrich our college. First, let us give thanks for all the men and women who, through the ages, have believed in the right of children to be educated, especially today, remembering those, past and present, whose concern has been so great that they have given generously for the provision of our school. For these and all your gifts, we thank you, O Lord. Let us give thanks for all those who ventured in faith to refound our school in Catford, in order to bring an education based on Christian principles to the new growing outskirts of London. For these and all your gifts, we thank you, O Lord. Let us give thanks for the succession of heads and staff who have served the school and for the individual gifts they have brought, for the qualities of character and for the knowledge and skill they have sought to pass on. For these and all your gifts, we thank you, O Lord. Let us also give thanks for the larger community, which is St Dunstan's, for governors, parents and old Dunstonians, and for all whose work or life, by support, interest or encouragement, touches and enriches the school. For these and all your gifts, we thank you, O Lord. Let us give thanks for the Cathedral of St Saviour and St Mary Overeem for its work and witness, for Christopher our Bishop, for the work of St Christopher's Hospice and for all people of goodwill, 
For these and all your gifts, we thank you, O Lord. The first reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, and the day of the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They'll be called oaks, oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. Thanks be to God. The second reading is taken from the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom. And with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Thanks be to God. marvellous that through the medium of modern technology we are able to join together as a college community on this commemoration day. Of course there are no chartered trains today or crocodiles of pupils and staff with their gowns and their hoods walking down to the station getting on to our own chartered train always reminding us of the express to Hogwarts and those wonderful moments when members of the public rush and jump onto the train at the last minute and suddenly find themselves surrounded by teachers and school children all on their own chartered train. What a joy to see this service 
chaired by pupils and staff, by seniors and juniors. It is of course a pity that we're not in the beautiful cathedral at Southwark where we usually meet, but we are still here gathered, and that is the most important thing. Whenever we gather for a really important occasion, there are always three elements which are essentially present, and they are the past, the present and the future. These are always present in moments of significance. I was thinking, for an example, year 13, leaving the school now and looking to the future, but perhaps their thinking of the past, their days at school, their friendships, the subjects they suddenly found fascinating, it's the past that brought them to the present. And now the present moment where things are not perhaps as they would most like, but they are waiting and they are still part of the community. And the future, when they get to university with all the joy of that new way of living and all the possibilities for their future lives. Moments of significant always have that three-corded strand. And so we look to the past in order to thank our benefactors and founders and all the people who have been part of this school for the whole of its history. We thank them for their generosity, not only financially, but, but their generosity of time and intellect and vision as they contributed in their different ways to the life of the school. We think of all the headmasters and mistresses for the teachers of the past, for the pupils that went through our school. The past is always important. It is the key to the future. It is because of where we've been that we now where we are. And of course, the present. We are the college at this time. We are the people who inherit what the past has given to us and at the moment it is ours and we are the college and hopefully we are the continuum of of the good things which they passed on and live up to the high expectations and traditions of our school the Bible says, if there is no vision, the people perish. And I believe that as we look to the future, we are reminded that the college is organic, it's living, it grows, it moves. And whilst we hold on to traditions at St Dunstan's, and we do that with not a heavy hand, but somehow with a warmth, we also are prepared to embrace new things, new ideas, new opportunities, always happy and willing to widen the scope of education in all its aspects. A vision for the future, a joy of being the college at the moment and respect for the past. Actually, Commemoration Day was the first day I ever really had anything to do with St Dunstan's. I was coming as your chaplain, but I hadn't yet arrived, and I was invited to preach at a Commemoration Day. As I entered Southwark Cathedral, and people, prefects and others, started to talk to me, staff greeted me, I realised for the first time, and now I've known this for the whole of the time, that St Dunstan's is a very different school. You can feel it, it's a different place. It has a very special life. And I know that we love it because it is so unique. 
I could feel the difference. I'd been in many schools. St Dunstan was a scholar. He became Archbishop of Canterbury. He was a confidant to kings. He was also a musician and an artist, a man of great learning, but also he understood the joy of art and music and literature. At our college, we try to give equal weight to the many facets of learning, literature, history, theology, philosophy, and a real appreciation of the arts in all its forms, alongside scientific and practical endeavor. Our vision is wide and our vision is inclusive. This leads us to respect and celebrate those who are different from ourselves and who make different choices to us. I'm always impressed at an assembly when someone can get up onto the stage and play the violin or guitar or perhaps from below the stage the piano or perhaps they will sing. I'm always impressed by the utter genuineness of the applause and the warmth and the joy that we have in celebrating the gifts of others. And that in itself indeed is a great gift. We certainly have much to give thanks for today, from the past, the present and the future. Primarily, we give thanks for each other. Tiny children, right up to 18-year-olds that tower above us when they talk to us. Alongside the staff who work in the college in every single respect. The governors the parents, the old Dunstonians, all of them who in their way are supporting the college life. I know things are very different at the moment, but we are still a community. We are still the community that cares, that is inclusive, that celebrates each other, that understands true learning that we might acquire wisdom as well as knowledge. We have much to give thanks for. And it is good to stop, to reflect and to be thankful. Album Exorna, let us all in our own way, individually different imaginative, eccentric, all adorn the white. Father God, we give you thanks for our college. We pray for our teachers that they may use their skills wisely and for those who work in the college in any capacity. May they feel truly valued and help the pupils under their care to learn and to grow. Help us to understand the joys and the challenges they feel in their daily work. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we ask for your blessing on our college, especially at this time when we are teaching and learning in new ways. In these circumstances, give us the will to work together and the wisdom to listen to each other. Bind us together as a community which values and supports each individual member. And we pray for the day when we shall gather again as a college and celebrate each other and our community. We ask this in your name. We pray, Father, for children less fortunate than ourselves, for the millions of children and young people who have no access to education and which denies them so many opportunities in life. We pray for those who work to increase the possibility of learning throughout the world, and we commit ourselves as a college to be part of this movement for change. This we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the junior school in which we long to return to. We rejoice in all that we share together, for our teachers and those who help them for their kindness and all the exciting things they teach us. Thank you for our break times when we play with our friends.
thank you for the joy of learning, eating and celebrating together. Help us grow as we move through the school in health and in wisdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so now I'm going to read an act of self-dedication. Oh God, we thank you for the joy of education, for being enabled to share in the knowledge, wisdom and understanding of the ages for the enriching of our lives through the creative worlds of art, music and literature, for the understanding and insights into your world, which science gives us, and for the skills to apply them. Help us to use our learning as a way to help others by way of celebrating and employing the riches of your creation of which we are a part. Make us aware of our privilege and our responsibility. Make us good stewards of the world you have sent us in and of the gifts and opportunities we have been given. May we use them not in pursuit of selfish gain, but in the service of others, that we may play our part in establishing your kingdom of justice, peace and love for one another. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen.
Let us in a moment of stillness remember today for those whom we shall pray. And let us particularly pray today for those suffering from the coronavirus, for those who are very poorly in intensive care, those who feel awful. And pray for the doctors and nurses and all other workers who are risking their own safety in order to bring healing and comfort to them. We pray for those in hospices, nursing homes, those being cared for in their own homes. And we pray for the scientists who are working in order to eradicate this disease and find medicines to give treatment. And so let us dedicate ourselves and renew our offering of ourselves in the service of God. And we use the words of St. Francis. Merciful God, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, may we bring love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is sadness, joy. Where there is darkness, light, grant that we may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. This we ask for the sake of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we unite our prayers with those of our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen.